Welcome everybody to our Carols by Candlelight here at Disbury Baptist Church on Christmas Eve. Welcome to you, whether you're worshipping with us here in our sanctuary or at home via the internet. We begin with a call to worship. The people who lived in darkness have been given a great light. Praise the God who hears our cries. Our souls sing out God's praise. God has brought us light of hope and peace. Tonight, in this place, the light of God's love is given to us. We shall see that light and let it shine through our lives. Our first Bible reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders the rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onwards and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. We sing together the first of our carols, carol number one, Once in Royal David's City. Once in Royal David's City stood a lowly cattle shed where a
Our second reading is from Micah chapter 5, verses 2 to 5. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. We pray together. Eternal God, in the stillness of this night, you sent your almighty word to pierce the world's darkness with the light of salvation. Give to the earth the peace that we long for and fill our hearts with the joy of heaven through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative, Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. We sing together carol number two. The angel Gabriel from heaven came. Most high. 
next reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. We sing together our third carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 14. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. We sing together carol number four, while shepherds watched their flocks by night. Carol number four. Our next reading is from Luke chapter 2, reading from verses 15 to 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. We sing together quietly. Silent night, holy night. It's carol number five.
This reading is taken from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light the true light which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Who would have thought that we would be meeting in this way for Christmas Eve 2020? At this time last year, none could have known that this year's Christmas Eve carol service would be held in this way, with participants masked, in vastly reduced number, at two metres distance, and webcasting to an online congregation. Yet here we are. It is different to the way it was last year, and we hope very different to the way it will be next year. But here we are this evening. We would have liked to have been gathering with friends and family, but we find ourselves alone or with only very few companions this Christmas time. It might help then to remember that there is gloom aplenty in the nativity story. Scripture tells us that Jesus' birth took place at a time not only of joy and welcome, but of fear, violence and catastrophe. We tend, of course, not to focus on those aspects of the story when we read it in church or when we watch the school nativity. No room at the inn is often presented as comedy rather than a perilous situation for a young pregnant mother and a nervous expectant father. We ignore the presence of the emperor Augustus Caesar looming in the background, or his ruthlessness and absolute power over the Roman Empire and its people. We give short shrift to King Herod, the massacre of the Holy Innocents, and the flight of the Holy Family to Egypt. This year, however, these grim and terrible events and circumstances may attract our attention. They sound like current events, and this can be heartening because it reminds us that Jesus is with us in the gloom of our strange and difficult year. Indeed, this is the Christmas story 
that in the incarnation God entered the gloom and the gladness of human existence. Love came down at Christmas, love, all oh, lovely love divine. God came down, the Word became flesh and lived among us. When he came, the light of angels flooded the fields of the shepherds. They ran to see the baby and returned to their sheep rejoicing. But afterwards, we must presume, the light disappeared. They were still lowly shepherds who must labour in the fields day by day. Had anything changed? Well, the lives of the shepherds went back to normal. But surely the memory of the light of God's glory would always be with them. So too for us. In some ways, our lives go on much as they would if Christ had never come. Let's be honest. The coming of God to the earth does not save us from a pandemic. But it can save and transform us in the pandemic and in spite of it. Yes, the coming of Christ, his living, dying and rising again, has the power to transform all who receive him. For to those who receive him, he gives the power to become children of God. Wait a minute, you say, are we not all children of God? Well, in a way, yes, of course. We are all made and loved by God. Every human being, a child of God by creation. And yet, don't ask me why, but human beings often seem bent on denying God, on resisting, ignoring, or opposing God. They refuse the parental love of God and prefer to go it alone. Jesus, the eternal Word made flesh, came to win us back to God, to reconcile us to God. He bore our sins and our sorrows on the cross that we might be forgiven, healed, and restored to right relationship with God. If we let him, he will light a candle in our hearts, even this Christmas, that we might know something of his light, even in the deepest darkness. When we begin to know that light, we want to share it in word and deed, partnering with God to make this world a better place. God, who lights a candle in our hearts through Jesus Christ, bids us pass on the light, for it is always better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. May Christ light a candle in our hearts this Christmas time, and may we share Christ's light however and wherever we can. So help us, God. Amen. We make our responses as we sing together our sixth carol, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly.
Let us pray. Loving God, whose light shines in the face of Jesus Christ, in the darkness of sorrow and suffering, let your light shine. In the darkness of isolation and separation, let your light shine. In the darkness of fear and anxiety, let your light shine. In the darkness of death and loss, let your light shine. In the darkness of injustice and exploitation, let your light shine. In the darkness of poverty and hunger, let your light shine. In the darkness of war and hatred, let your light shine. In every place and experience of darkness, Lord, let your light shine. Amen. Again and wants to be your God. 
sing together our seventh carol, O come all ye faithful. So we come to our final carol, number eight. Hark the herald angels sing.
May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen.